Luke, nice to have you with us. Okay, we are now streaming live on YouTube. Okay, right. So, ladies and gentlemen, hope you're all well and uh, welcome. Uh, can we start with the election of the chair? So, um, are there any nominations for a chair? I'd like to nominate Tony. <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> Last one standing. Any other nominations? No. In that case, uh, I think, can I just ask you to vote on behalf of that nomination? Right. It looks to me as though we have a... I can't, I can't see Kelly's vote. Kelly, put your hand up. <laughs> you can get put a note in chat for us. Yep. Sorry, I vote yes. I can't put my camera on at the moment. My hands are full. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So let's then move on to the election of the vice chair. Um, could we have some nominations, please? Well, I, I nominate um, Donna. Right. I second. Se second that. Oh. And are there any other nominations? No, in that case, may we vote, please, for Donna? I did like it. I did like it the way Donna shook her head. <laughs> <laughs> was that what it was? I didn't realise. No, I'm oh, the... vice chair. If that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Donna. That's okay. Right. Uh, any apologies for absence, please, Fiona? No, I've just got um, one. No. From Ian Riceman. Oh, you have? Have you? Okay. Thank you. And I, that call was just from Stefan, who's trying to join us. I just need to resend the link to him. He'll be with us in a moment. Okay. Ian's joined us for looks of it. Hello, Ian. Ian's apologised. He's trying to join us. <laughs> it's great communication. Coming in now. It's coming in. <laughs> great communication. Hello, Ian. Can't see the full. Let's put the. Uh... Well, he's just sent me. I have work meetings. Just sent my apologies. In fact, my work meeting lasted two minutes. So, oh. <laughs> is that is that a good thing or a bad thing, Ian? Um, well, it's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome, Ian. You've missed the first two items of the agenda. The chair has been elected, and the vice chair has been elected. You are been nominated for both of them. So, congratulations. Oh, well, thanks very much. Uh, so that's <laughs> <a good> honour. <laughs> no, no, no I, I do have to leave at two o'clock, though, by the way. Okay. Um, let's go. There's no apologies for absence. I think that's correct, Fiona. It's Stephanie. Uh, Fiona said he was trying to get in. I've just sent Stefan the link, so hopefully he'll be with us in a couple of minutes. Okay. But um, the agenda item he's interested in is not till later in the okay. agenda. Um, are there any declarations of interest related to the business that trans can be transacted? No, it appears not. In that case, let's proceed. Um, public participation. Um, I'm assuming that Luke Adams is uh, observing rather than participating. Is that correct, Luke? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other public participants apart from presumably um, Stefan later on? No, none other than, than Stefan, no. Okay. Um, should we take any comments from Stefan, Stefan in terms of the uh, motion when it comes to that point in the agenda? Would that be all right for everyone? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, let's, let's move forward then. So first of all, we have the minutes of the uh, last of the last meeting. Um, are there any points that are not covered in the agenda? And as I haven't printed it off, Seth, uh, Fiona, can just advise me if there are any points not covered in the agenda? No, no, I think the, the agenda covers everything we okay. discussed today. Um, right. Let's accept the minutes as being signed and go on to the progress on projects. Um, let's also pick up within this the point on uh, the SOHAR discussion, if we may, if that's all right. Um, mm -hmm. 
So first of all, public engagement and communications. Um, Rebecca, would you like to comment on this, please? Um, so we are doing a, a number of things for public communication. So you will have seen or you might have seen the monthly column in uh, the Henley Standard, um, which has been going quite well. I've covered different topics um, every week or every month. Um, so that, that seems to be going fairly well. I've had, um, I haven't had any direct contacts. So usually you include an email. Um, I haven't had any direct contacts, but I have had people say to me, oh, we saw your article in the Henley Standard. So some people are clearly seeing it and reading it. Um, we've completed the film. Just um, quickly, Fiona, could you let, let Stefan in, please? Right, go ahead, sorry, sorry Rebecca. Um, we've completed the film with Green Core Construction with Patrick and myself. Um, I was pleased with that as, um, as a completed film. I think it was um, informative. Um, and Naomi is now putting that up on the website. So she's finding a place for that on the website and it'll go also on Facebook. Um, this coming Thursday, we have a stall at the market. This is to mainly to launch um, Solar Streets again, another tranche of Solar Streets. And therefore, Andy Tunstall is running most of it. But also, I will put some of the Climate Emergency Working Group um, stuff out as well, certainly our banners and things out as well. Um, and I'll be there for a couple of hours myself in the morning. Um, and I think, Patrick, you also offered to be there for some of the time as well, didn't you? One more volunteer. Thank you very much indeed. I'll let Andy know. What time do you think you'll come? I'll 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 follow on direct from you. All right. right. Can we have? We probably need another volunteer for the afternoon. It, it just, yeah, it depends. I mean, the market usually packs up by about two thirty, doesn't it? So oh, okay. it's probably not that long. So no, that's fine. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So that's an opportunity, obviously, to talk to people. Um, we've also got a stand at the Neighbourhood Plan on Friday and Saturday. Um, so I have designed in outline, I need to do a, the more detailed work on it, a set of, um, a set of PowerPoints um, talking about all the different projects that we're doing to go on that. And um, I picked up the actual boards from Kath yesterday. So I think we've got enough material to cover the boards. Um, I might also put some stuff there about solar streets as another opportunity to, to push that. Um, in, in terms of uh, in, you know, contacts that we're getting via things like Facebook, we have had one recently relating Great Coxwell, who's interested in solar streets, um, who I've talked to, um, put in contact with Andy Tunstall. She'd, it's quite interesting really how the network works because she'd been talking to the people in Farringdon, which is next to Great Coxwell. She'd heard about solar streets, they're doing solar streets in Farringdon, and that's how they contacted us. So um, that's kind of where we are now. I'll just check the Green Corps video. Is that on the website yet? The Henry Town Council website. No, no, I don't think so yet. Oh yeah, I've sent it to Naomi, um, suggesting where it may go. Um, I'm not sure where she is with it yet, though. Okay. Um, the purpose for being on the website is because the representative of the planning committee, which included Kath, um, Michelle, and also Ken, uh, interviewed the MD of Green Corps and express the fact that they'd like to have interviewed, like to have recorded the interview, um, which we couldn't do. So we did a separate video interview. And the purpose of it going on the Henry Town Council website is so the planning committee can refer potential new build developers to uh, a passive house approach and therefore uh, encourage them to take a, a more net zero carbon approach towards the um, build and I think the sooner we can get it up the sooner it can be used by the planning committee so if we can encourage Naomi to move as quickly as possible on that that'd be helpful um thanks on that though uh, Rebecca appreciate that um trees yeah. he's going to plant some <laughs> yeah well so I mean well this year we've already planted over 700 or given away and planted over 750 trees uh, the objective is 5,000, so we're quite some way off that. Um, 
but having discussions. They're, they're, they're gradually building up. It's a, it's a strange time of year because there's not much activity at this time. It's all about maintenance and preparation. So it doesn't look as though there's very much going on, but it's, it's at the moment, it's about uh, trying to engage with landowners, which is proving quite difficult. Um, but uh, I had a first contact from uh, Invesco about this, uh, oh. this, this, this uh, the Queen's Canopy, which is in a nationwide campaign, um, which is supported by the Woodland Trust. And they want to get involved in that. And they want to have someone involved in it with them who can actually help with the delivery. So that's where we're stepping in. Um, the, uh, I'm trying to think what else, yes. Working with Fiona to try and work with the rest of the council, that's particularly with Becky Walker, um, on the um, on the uh, strategy for the council, and uh, I think we've just got to have a meeting with them. So Fiona's going to arrange a meeting <coughs> with with the appropriate officers for that. Um, the other thing with the uh, is with the neighbourhood plan, ah. and and the uh, I've now had a meeting with uh, the. Um, SODC and we've come to an agreement as to what we can and cannot put in the neighbourhood plan so hopefully we've got there with the trees policy and we will be looking to, to improve, increase the evidence um, on what we have done in the past and I think what we're going to do is to use the Millennium Wood which is on Gillett's Field because there's 2,000 trees there or there were 2,000 trees there, which are representative of what can be done at a local level. And I think actually that um, we, as a, the Climate Working Group, Greener Henley as well, and the Town Council can use that Millennium Wood as an example of what can be achieved in just 20 years or 21 years. And it's astonishing, really. If you look at that, you'd be hard pressed to know it hasn't been there for 50 years. It's a very impressive little bit of woodland. Uh, it covers about two acres. And, you know, it's, uh, it's now uh, a semi-mature wood. So I think that there's something that, Fiona, there's something there for us to do. Maybe have something on the website, even have a video just walking through the Millennium Wood, just to make people aware of it. And also aware of what can be achieved with uh, community effort uh, 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 at scale. So, <coughs> so that's where we are at the moment. Okay, thanks on that, Patrick. Um, I do think there's a need to communicate more about what you're doing. 700 trees is a lot of trees. And uh, I think at some stage we ought to be asking the likes of Henry Sander to run a feature on the tree strategy and to yep. um, encourage residents to participate because there, there are offers for residents there as well, aren't there? Okay. In addition, um, Claudia, myself, Rebecca and Fiona had a discussion this morning with Soha um, for a variety of subjects, but one of them touched upon trees and they're interested in looking at whether they can use uh, and plant trees on their own um, land, which is not used for housing. So uh, Fiona and, well Fiona, but now yourself as well, have got a a need to contact them to talk about yep. what can be done. And I think you should extend it beyond Henley. Yeah. In that respect, there's an opportunity to put plant trees more on their premises. Um, Rebecca, sorry. Well, I, I was going to make that exact point, actually. That they sounded quite enthusiastic, actually. Mm. And they said that they had a number of pieces of land, which I presume were not suitable for residential building, um, but were effectively waste land. So they were interested in the idea of planting trees. Oh, that might be some significant amounts of land. I don't know. Yeah. Do we, do we have a contact person there that Fiona and I can get in yes. touch with? Yes, Fiona yes. has contact. Oh, you have. Good. Okay. That's all right. All right, Fiona, do you want to talk about uh, electric vehicles then? A charging point more relevantly. Yes, so um, the Oxfordshire Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Strategy has now uh, been published, and so that's enabling the transport strategies um, subgroup 
um, to continue more effectively with, with their work on developing um, a particular strategy uh, for Henley. Um, the decision that the council have made to install ele four electric vehicle charge points at Mill Meadows um, is, is being implemented. Um, I'm in contract negotiations now with, with Joju to work out the details of that. So that's, um, that's moving forward. Um, the, the council also made a bid to um, Scottish and Southern Electricity Networks, thinking about the issue of ensuring that Henley has enough capacity to deliver all of the electric vehicle charge points that we think um, will be needed. And this was the part of the green recovery bid. Um, unfortunately, um, our, our bid wasn't successful on this occasion. And they only made 12 awards out of, I think it was 360 projects um, that were submitted. So I, I would suggest there's, there's no shame in not having um, got over the line on this occasion. Um, but they were very interested in, in our bid and impressed by it and therefore have asked us to go back for further discussions with them um, about other ways um, of, of funding um, the network within Henley. And so um, the electric vehicle subgroup, which is led by Councillor Lawrence Plant, um, are working on, on preparations um, for further meetings uh, with Scottish and Southern Electricity Networks. Okay, also in that respect, um, what is important is that the Mill Meadows site, uh, the agreement with the contractor is that it should only cover the direct area around the pavilion. The rest could be, could have um, solar panels installed by the council, should it wish, from a point of view of tourism. Is that correct, Fiona? Um, charging point, Tony. Sorry, what did I say? Electric vehicles. So yeah, charging points. You can Sorry. always install those as well. <laughs> yes, I know, yeah. Charging points, beg your pardon. Is that correct, Fiona? Yes, that's right. They've agreed to a definition of the area of restriction, which just covers the space, the four spaces that are currently being used. So the wider area of Mill Meadows, the council will be free to um, use other supplies in the future, should that, you know, should that be desirable or necessary. And that relates to the need for SSEN to provide electricity capacity across all the streets and potential park, car parks yeah. of Henley. Um, what is also the case, again, out of the SOHA meeting was that they identified that they may be considering putting uh, EV charging points on some of their land. Um, and actually, they will advise uh, Fiona so there's no overlap between both the council pursuing charging points in those areas and themselves. Um, Donna. Yeah, um um, I don't know if it's going off slightly topic, but that email I sent you because I couldn't attend that meeting this morning. Did you have any joy with them um, agreeing to ex ex la widen? Yes, uh, yes, we did. They, 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 accept, they accepted that that was uh, agreeable. They would actually allow um, residents to install their own domestic charging points. So um, they won't be doing it then? Will pardon? they not? Will they not be putting the plug sockets in because as people are having to trail no. cables by their windows, which I, no. think they should, I think they should be doing it. I think they need to step up, quite frankly. Well, I, it's the responsibility of tenants. They need to step up. Um, need to. It's That's a questionable position. They certainly accept the fact that tenants should be allowed to install their own domestic charging points if they wish um, and would allow the access way to the driveways to be widened to enable vehicles to be to enter. Um, they didn't talk about who would pay for that. Mm. Well, also, did, did, did you speak to them about the areas that I pointed out up at the top of Crisp Road as, um, and where is it, Clements? Crisp Road was certainly discussed. Yeah, because Fiona, there's Would you like to make a comment on that? Yeah. Fiona? Yes, I just wanted to um, add the other comment that Soha made this morning that they're always willing to consider requests from residents for environmental improvements, but to date they haven't received any requests for electric vehicle charging points. 
Um, yeah. So that, you know, that's the, the position, the information that they have at the moment. But obviously, as soon as there's a need, then you know they would a demand. Right. They would take a different view. Yeah. I personally think they need to get their act together and really move forward with this because mm. there are lots of driveways that are not wide enough for cars. Many people don't have um, driveways. They need to really pull their finger out because they're going to have be overwhelmed trying to do the work when the time comes. I don't disagree with that, but would you like to make it and approach them directly and request that uh, they install a domestic charging point? Yeah, but I don't seem to have much luck with them. They won't. I've been trying for three years to get to them to replace this wooden post at the top of my road and they still won't do that. You know, so I do feel like I'm banging my head and I was hoping the council would have a bit more clout than me, myself, actually. So, um, well, would you like us to ask the question directly? Yes, please. They need to pull the finger out and get on with it. We won't <laughs> position it quite like that. So, they're going to be absolutely overwhelmed with requests for this and they will not be able to cope. And there'll be such a backlog and then tenants will be complaining because they've got nowhere to charge their vehicles where they should start doing this now. Small adjustments by putting new gates on um entrances to those that have driveways and widen them by a foot so that they're able to get the cars up. just small things they could do that they have an end of budget they usually start doing maintenance things small things like in january to use up the budget so they really need to crack on i think okay. can we use you as a direct example of making a request could i make a suggestion there uh tony um that we lobby the tenants because there will be tradespeople that will want to charge electric vans in the yeah. future and that if yeah. we actually put a questionnaire out to the residents of crisp road luca avenue to well, say, there's other areas as well uh, as, and other areas to say if you're a solar tenant and you're thinking about getting an electric van or electric car lobby them to get the charging point installed <laughs> And then if they get that pressure from other people, you know, from tenants, it won't just be you, Donna, it'll be the voice of many that, that, that would, would actually might persuade them they actually do need to get their finger out. And that, that's probably more persuasive. Than they do, because the, the, there was a lady, I can't remember, she lives at the top of Quest Road, and she was saying, well, how can I get a vehicle at charging point? Because there's nowhere, you know and stuff, because someone was saying, I'll oh, go park in the car park. She was not practical for me because I don't want to leave my car in the car park. No, but so hard do need to pull the finger out. They really do need to stop sticking their head in the sand and engage and do something. And it really frustrates me that they are a bit slow and reluctant to do. Well, I'm not can, can I just take Patrick's point forward? Because I think that's a very useful comment. Um, and that is that we actually do a questionnaire. We tell so how we're going to do the questionnaire, but we have to do a questionnaire asking how many would wish to have an electric vehicle and well, when think, they might have it. And then I think, I think they would. It's just practicality of making. I it, don't I understand that point. Yeah. Let's yeah. actually take that forward. I will write it, and if it's all right, I'll put it by a field to make certain there's a council perspective yeah. on it. Yeah. I'm just wondering how it's going to reach tenants because in their newsletter, not everybody really reads their newsletters that they well, get. probably deliver it. Let's right. take Chris Road as an example. Some of them don't. Some of the houses, quite a few of the houses on this estate have actually been bought. So it's um, knowing who is a tenant and who isn't. Well, we can ask that question. We've got a list of those. I've got a list of that. Uh, this estate, there's Gainsborough, Waterman's and I think the Flats down Quebec Road. And let's, some let's let's try one area as a as a test yeah. to start with. Okay, but, that's. Yeah, there there is a list of all the council tenants in uh, council houses in in Henley, um, and there's about six hundred and fifty of them, and so with that one can actually do a selected mail drop. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will deliver develop that and uh, I'll review it with people, okay? Okay, thank you very much. I'm just sorry I couldn't attend. That's all right. I understand that fully. 
it, quite um, a bit more was said at that meeting. So shall I go through that? Because it might prevent having the same discussion twice. Yeah. If, I just, just want to clarify what's been agreed here, whether we should we should have a proposal that there is a questionnaire and have a vote on that to make it a formal decision of the meeting would just be helpful if you wouldn't mind, Tony. Yeah, okay. Is everyone in favour of having a questionnaire to the tenants? Probably mm -hmm. around Chris Road. No, I'm not actually. Pardon? Well, can we uh, complete the discussion and then have the vote? Because I think it's important to reiterate all the information that was given during the meeting before we can vote for or against the questionnaire. Are you talking about the electric vehicle charging? Yes. Discussions? Go ahead then. Yeah. So this wasn't confidential, was it? I can just reiterate what was said. So basically they said they're talking to a company called EDC about either a directly funded option or an option uh, that, uh, that is around you know, uh, regular management costs. If they start with this, they will start with communal car parking which does sounds logical to me, for disabled people who get apparently uh, every few three years a new car, they will be looking at introducing electrically charged cars and covering the costs of any charging that would need to be required by them. Based on what they see in terms of demand, which is nothing at the moment, they can't see individual charging points being rolled out in the next four to five years. But if residents request permission, this will not be reasonably withheld, but the budget is limited. So I think he did imply that they'll have to fund it themselves. Um, but that wasn't entirely clear. Um, that budget, I think, covers maintenance like hedges, other repairs on drives, etc. But I didn't quite get the detail of that. Now, to me, now, that doesn't sound like an unreasonable approach. Uh, and also, instead of submitting a questionnaire, shouldn't we instead try pushing the car scheme, what's called car sharing scheme, for these residents, which is what, which is the sort of group that it was intended for, isn't is it not? Well, I think that's a separate issue, to be honest, but Donna. Because there are several people that, that um, like Tony said, um, and vans, they're like maintenance. Um, plumbers and electricians, they're not going to be interested in car share. You have to be practical. It's not going to be practical to have car share because many people don't live in, work in Henley and they drive out and they're not going to be able to share just the two cars that we have available. It's not practical. You have to be realistic. And I'm saying to you now that because of how slow Sohar is, we do have to act let's, on that. Let's not let's take a positive approach about how we handle it um it, they need to help tenants because well, um they do they need to be practical in helping to widen the driveway let's so, try and establish first of all how many they uh, <coughs> and what the needs are okay that's all right yeah are people willing to go ahead with uh, the proposition to actually develop a questionnaire and and yeah. share that with uh, soha yeah. Yep. Everyone in favour? All right, let's go with that then. Um, Tony, Jack, Jackie's been waiting very patiently. Oh, I'm so, I can't see Jackie, sorry. I didn't realise that. Beg your pardon, Jackie. No, no, no worries. Um, it might have gone past the stage for my question, but I just wondered what the benefit is of also having the EVC subgroup approaching um, it, in regards to all of this as well, because this this meeting was for this group, wasn't it, with Soha this morning? But but where will the EVC subgroup fit into this? Is what I was wondering. Fiona, would you like to comment on that? Uh, at the moment, um, the EV subgroup haven't plans to do any questionnaires so it's not something um that they are planning to do not the questionnaire i just mean overall because this particular issue that donna's raised is is specific to electric vehicle charging so mm -hmm. what was going through my mind was if there is a benefit to the the subgroup taking on 
some pushing for this subject. I think that's a really good point because it clearly fits within some of the project objectives um, that they're designing. So it's certainly something that the subgroup, you know, would fit within their remit to look at. Shall we okay. talk about it at our next meeting? That's the transport strategy group. Yeah, the sub. Patrick. Yeah, in fact, uh, Chris Brobe was identified with SSE as being a probable significant project that would trigger uh, improvement and reinforcement of the supply. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of, what's happening here is we've got two groups at least that are now sort of milling around in the same ground. And I can see it's gonna cause confusion both for the residents and for SOHA if we've got the Transport Strategy Group as well as the uh, as as well as the climate working group, both trying to contact both of them. So I think we do. Let me to... write. Let me write this questionnaire and hand it to you, Patrick, and you can actually organise as part of the transport strategy group. Okay. Just to make sure, I think you're right about clarity. We 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 raised EV charging just at the end of the discussion of the the this. Uh, yeah. that's one half of it. The other half is the contact with Soha and to say perhaps they need to be made aware that on this topic, they're going to be approached by this other group, the transport they, strategy. They group. were made aware of that this morning with, when Fiona was positioned okay. as being TSG as well as Good. climate emergency. All right, thank you. Is that correct, Fiona? Yes, so, yeah, that's absolutely right. Okay, all right. Um, Update on sites for solar panels. The, Rebecca talked about solar streets and, and relaunch. Um, and I think that's an important issue. I mean, I've got solar panels as a result of solar streets. Since I've just completed my first year, the, um, the return yeah. on it is about 7% gross. Um, and I'm happy to share those figures. It's not so great this June when it's tipping down with rain, but there you go. Um, all across the year, it's been quite worthwhile. Um, we're still progressing discussions on community and commercial buildings in Henley and the area around. Um, that is... I'll have a word. Sorry? I think it's taking the whole front off, that's why. <laughs> Someone's had a front taken off, by the sound of it. Um, sounds like Stefan. Okay, don't worry. Um, <laughs> But the, the, one of the biggest issues is that people are, are not necessarily fully staffed. But uh, we're having discussions um, ongoing with some, a large site and also with two community sites this week. So we will keep people informed, but rather than publicly uh, declare who it is, we'll actually uh, allow that to be communicated as and when we actually get an agreement. Um, Let's move on to the Henley Environmental Action Plan. Um, Patrick, do you want to make a comment on that first of all, and then I'll come back to it? Um, yes. Um, what to say? Uh, I think that it's, um, as far as I'm aware, the, the, the action plan has now gone to planning. Planning have approved it, and it's now going to three other committees, finance, uh rec no recreation amenities fiona mm -hmm. perhaps fiona you can tell us where it's got to within the town council so the planning committee has approved it the next step um is for um us to write um to the committees to ask them to review that information so that the the henley environmental action plan has been approved it doesn't need any further approvals by the council and we can start asking um, the committees and officers um, to review the, the projects proposed and start to take action around those now. Excellent. And we're having a meeting on the subject on Friday where we'll start talking about how we can actually communicate with all the various stakeholder groups and broaden the content in that context. So we'll keep you informed. We will need uh, council support, particularly of facilities, um, but let's get the arranged, let's identify the targets first of all, and we'll come back to you on that. Um, let's then go to progress on council policy. Um, first of all, the 
developing an internal policy on zero net zero carbon. This was developed first of all by um, Claudia in conjunction with um, Fiona. Would you like to say where we're at since having had the discussion with about it on the informal basis? Claudia, first of all, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. We, I have. there's a document uh, and we're still waiting for input. So uh, notably from Sheridan and please if Kath can also have a look. Uh, a number of committee members, working group members have fed back their comments. I'm basically waiting to collate all of it together and produce a, ne a next draft. Uh, Sorry. Fiona? Um, I wanted to say thank you very much to Claudia for all her work on this. Um, the, the clerk has, in fact, just before this meeting, so you won't have seen it yet, Claudia, I expect, um, sent his comments, um, which, look, which look broadly positive. You know, so so oh. we're, we're, heading, we're heading in the right direction and we, we have got some input from, from the clerk. Um, so we can, we can um, take that forward. Um, the clerk has also decided that the next... The, the policy would need to be approved by the full council and there is a meeting on the 27th of July um, which we we could um, perhaps aim for the papers obviously go out a week uh, before that meeting um, as this group is unlikely to have a meeting before that time again I wondered if you wanted to consider delegating the finalizing of the words of that policy to a, to a subgroup including the chair and and Claudia to to finalise the wording so it could go to council on the twenty seventh of July. That that would be a possible way forward. Is everyone happy to have that subgroup? Yeah, I'd like to propose that. Okay. Is Let's... there anybody else or any other councillors who would like to be part of that that subgroup deciding on the word of the wording of the net zero? policy just to make sure everyone who wishes to have a direct say does so. I think Ian does. Has he left? Uh, I was going to say Ian's left. Would you be able to ask him after the meeting? Yeah, if we, if we can get Ian on board, that'd be helpful. Yeah, Ian's quite good at things like that. So, yeah, I propose Ian. <laughs> Seconded! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there is a need for the council to identify its current carbon footprint. Otherwise you can't possibly get to net zero. Um, yeah. So that has to be part of it. In that respect, let's go on to the second item on policy for the council, which is the biodiversity and climate emergency impact assessments. Fiona, would like to lead on this because you put all the papers together and it's a really helpful way of actually summarizing it in five words. Um, so, um, a couple of months ago, um, the council introduced um, a new template for meeting reports that go to committees and help them make their decisions, um, and it added a section on impact assessments um, for um, the biodiversity duty, uh, the climate emergency, and also um, crime and disorder, but obviously it's the first two issues that are the the concerns of this working group. So I thought it would be interesting to see after a couple of months of operation of this new template, um, how it was being used and whether perhaps um, the officers who write these reports for the committees in order to help the committees make the decisions um, were going about it in a consistent way and the optimum way to ensure that the outcomes of achieving biodiversity gain and um, addressing the climate emergency are best addressed. So I pulled together all of the impact assessments um, that have been written in the last um, couple of months uh, in, in the pack in your papers. And there's, there's also a summary table on about page seven, I think, um, of your pack that shows all the different, uh, the different impact assessments that have been put forward. Um, so I would be interested to hear your, your comments on, on how you think those assessments are being made. I, I would observe that they're being used in quite a varied way. And so perhaps there, there is um, an opportunity to provide 
um, officers and committee chairs with some training and support about how to write and use the impact assessments. Okay. May I ask the councillors, first of all, their views about how the impact assessments have been developed and their views on whether they could be improved or not? Ken. Ken. I have to say, uh, um, I have not been involved in this at all, Tony, I'm afraid to say. So I can't offer you any, any information. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, <coughs> Donna, any comments? Yeah, well, it does help when we're making decisions, I suppose, because then you have to take that into consideration. So it does, it does help. In your um, experience, are there any questions made of the impact assessments? Uh, <laughs> that sounds like possibly not. Oh. Kelly, how about you? Um, I think uh, responsible councillors would think of those things anyway on every decision you make. What it's helpful for is reminding them all. Uh, oh there's not a decent word enough. Uh, decent enough word. Um, but it's reminding the people that maybe don't think of of those things as part of every decision. And um, so I suppose it's useful for that. But I think there are a lot of us that have been using those as deciding factors on all projects forever, really. Um, it's just having them there as part of the report. Any thoughts from the voluntary group? Patrick? I would like to support the, the point that Fiona made, that, that actually the way we get those less responsible uh, councillors uh, um, to, to, to take account of these things um, is through training. And that if we can provide training for officers and councillors to help them to understand what they're for, and how they could be implemented and how they could be used, then it might improve the decision-making. It might improve the, or at least the, the, the breadth of evidence that, that is taken into account when decisions are made. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Donna, sorry. So, I think Kelly's probably already said it, but there are, there are a couple of councillors that don't really realise about climate emergency. Mm. And yeah, it has made, they've obviously now had to pay attention to it because there's maybe one that doesn't really think it's a problem okay. and really should think it's no. a problem. He no. or she should, perhaps, who knows? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they don't really think that we need climate. Okay. Jackie? Jackie? I think different people will always think different things. The important thing for me is that the standardisation across the filling in of the forms. Mm. Okay, Ken, sorry. Yeah, I, I think the problem with this, Tony, there, there are so many reports uh, coming forward, which obviously I'm reading all these today, and we even go on to more on uh, item nine and, um, and 11. Would it not pay to put a councillor's, just one particular councillor's name against, against one of these items rather than expect a councillor to take note of um, all of them, uh, which I'm saying in my case, you know, I, you know, I can't take any, basically any more on, and particularly when you've got, you know, five or six different reports that you're putting forward. So perhaps suggest if you've got one person, a councillor or a somebody, and put a name by them, at least they can just drive one through, rather than inspect it, you expect them to drive, you know, five or six reports forward if that makes any sense. I think so. I think the, the, I'd share Fiona's view about the variety of interpretation. And I suspect there's a need to have a better definition of what is a climate change impact and biodiversity impact. I think there's probably several interpretations looking at those reports. Um, and I think in that respect, it might be helpful to follow up Patrick's suggestion of some form of training First of all, I would have thought for the officers that are involved in each committee. Um, and I think there's probably a willingness from ourselves to actually support some form of training if that's agreed as being an appropriate approach. Um, but then you'd need to get the definition first of all and explain what it means, but that's part of the training. Does that make sense? Is it helpful? 
unanimous. I did. Um, I, I drafted a possible resolution which says to offer to run a support and training session for committee chairs, deputy chairs and committee officers on how to make the most of committee report sections on impact assessment for biodiversity in the climate emergency. Would, would that cover it or something like that? Would people be happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Patrick, you had a hand up earlier. I just want to check I haven't missed you. No, 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 it's fine. It's, 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 that's, that's good. Okay, should we take that resolution and vote on it? Are we happy mm -hmm. to go proceed? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then Fiona, let's let you, sorry, Pat, uh, Ken. Yeah, I, I was just going to come back on that again. Um, uh, Tony, so it's the same with the, with the neighbourhood plan uh, uh, review that we're doing at the moment. There's so much work going into that. Mm. And the, the minutes go to the planning committee and nobody ever asks a question there um, on, on basically anything. I think they just leave it to the, to the, to the review uh, committee just to get on and, on and do yeah. it, simple yeah. as that. And yeah. you know, it even goes to full council and nobody asks a question. So I think we, we just kind of merrily go along and, uh, and are just working our way through it. And I think this is very similar to this, if I've got to be brutally honest, you know, you, we're debating all the issues here, but once it goes to a committee, um, there's very little debate on any of the issues that are coming forward. Oh, that's my view. So should we structure any form of training purely for council officers or should we include the committee chairs as well? What's your view on that, Ken? I, I would suggest the chairs. That, to me, is the best way forward. At least then they have the knowledge of, okay. of, what's, of what's going on. Okay. Kath? I think it's the officers that write the reports. Um, I think there is an element of your writing your report, and obviously you've got what your, you know, your, your main thrust of the report, and then you get to that paragraph at the end, and then you think, oh, actually... I do need to think about that, which, you know, with, with some of mine, it's it's obvious and other times it's less obvious. So I think I, I personally would aim training at the officers because it's nearly all officer reports rather than councillor reports. Well, let's start with officers and then let the councillors decide if they'd like to extend it to the committee chairs. See, I think it would benefit the chairs because not all committees just have reports from officers. Sometimes if you want something done, you have to write the report yourself and it might be overseen by someone like Sheridan or Becky, mm. um, but you do have to sort of write the report yourself um, for time management, if nothing else, and efficiency, um, but also just so that chairs are aware. Okay, Kelly, that's helpful. Let's take Kelly's suggestion and, and broaden it to both council officers and, and chairs. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go with that then. Um, let's go on to a less um, less detailed subject and talk about the great big green week. Uh, Patrick and Fiona, first of all. Yeah, I, shall I start with this? Um, so it's being organised across the whole of Oxfordshire um, and it's organised by Friends of the Earth. Um, it has been very Oxford-centric in the past um, with most of the events happening in Oxford but this year they're very keen that events happen all over the whole county so they're looking to groups in different particularly in the towns so the bigger towns like Bicester and Banbury and Digcot but also the smaller towns like uh, Tame, Henley, uh, Wallingford, Watlington uh, in South Oxfordshire uh, as examples to run their own events. And we've got two weekends and a week in between effectively in which to run events. And in discussion, we were thinking that it would be good to have uh, something happening in the marketplace. If the marketplace is free you know, to us to use at any point over that week, and it's a week in September, um, we could actually put together an event which will be a focus for what this group is doing, uh, what the neighbourhood plan group is doing, what the council is doing generally, uh, and also what community groups are doing. 
uh, towards uh, green issues, climate and also ecological bio, bio you know, sort of biodiversity issues uh, in, the, in, in the town. So I think that Fiona, perhaps, I don't know, is there something I've missed there that you'd like to add? Yes, yes, um, a, a couple of points. Um, so um, I've been approached by South Oxford's here District Council's um, Economic Development Officer um, because they are going to run an eco-business fair uh, hope, and they're hoping to use Henley Town Hall for that during Great Big Green Week. So that's going to be one of the activities that the District Council is organising. They've invited me to discuss the Town Council's participation in that event the purpose of the event would be to promote local environmental businesses, but the event would be for all businesses and residents to come and see, obviously, as potential customers of the business, um, what the green businesses um, were in the area. So one opportunity, a particular opportunity that we've been offered that is expected to happen in Henley Town Hall would be the Eco Business Fair um, Within, within that week and I'm meeting uh, with the, the officers uh, next week to discuss um, exactly what that form sort of takes. Um, Patrick has also has quite rightly said there are a lot of events happening around Oxfordshire but Great Big Green Week is actually a national event so it's there are things happening all over the country um, as part of this and obviously it's timed to come a couple of months before the International Conference of the Parties meeting um, in, in Glasgow. So that's, there's a, there's, it's a national activity, not, a, not only in Oxfordshire. Okay. Donna, oh, no, I think you have your pencil pen up. Would you like to talk or would you like to introduce Stefan sitting next to you on the sofa? I can't hear you barking. <laughs> I that's the dog. She's playing. I thought that was no, Stefan. Sorry, I didn't realise that. No, no, that's my dog. I think it's, it's All right. been... Let's come back to the great big green week then. Are people um, feel we should try and participate in this? Yes, definitely. <laughs> this will require uh, securing presumably the marketplace, Fiona, is that correct? For some yes, that's, that's certainly... Um... I mean, it's, that's the decision, I guess, for today, whether you want to have your own events or just join in other events like this SODC one. Um, the marketplace is less available than perhaps it was because um, a lot of businesses in the marketplace now have outdoor seating areas. Mm. Um, but there's still quite a lot of space, um, particularly outside the bank there and um, for gazebos and, and stalls and things. Um, and there's, re then there's good availability, but what during you, that week. What are your views? Should we have a, a separate Henley Town Council or Henley uh, area event or link in with SODC? Any thoughts, Patrick? My, my thought was that um, the group hasn't yet done a huge amount with local green businesses. And so participating in the SODC event to help local businesses would be, would be a really interesting way forward. Okay. Um, pa Patrick, you had your... I, I think we can do both. Uh, and in fact, there's no reason why we can't ask uh, to use the barn or the fire station gallery. You know, it, it's really the scope of it. This depends on how much enthusiasm we have, how much we can involve other groups and how much we can get going. Uh, because I think the important thing is not to try and do it all ourselves, but actually to get other people involved and doing it their bit as well. Okay. And I would say that the the um, if we think about the local businesses that actually support the farmers market, you know there are a lot of local businesses that that that, that might be prepared to actually do something extra, something special for this week um, uh, as well. Okay, can I ask then who's going to take this forward? Well, I, I I'm volunteering to take it forward with Greener Henley. Um, mm. And I'm happy to be involved in a group of people, that, you know, organising it uh, and pushing for it. I think it needs representation from the council, and ideally, I, th I would very much like Fiona to be involved in the meetings that we have, 
so that there's a certain degree of coordination. So if, for instance, this discussion with SODC, just to make sure that that can be fitted into the whole thing and that we get, a, 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 it, it, it then appears as though it's a unified, you know, it's an event uh, mm. um, over the week. Can I, can I suggest we progress it forward as it stands, but actually the next informal group meeting, we have a thorough discussion of this as to what's involved, what type of skills are required and who might be available, because currently we're not going to do that now. It will take too much time. But actually, I think if we can get more detail about what's involved and what we need to do to make it happen, that would make sense. Yeah. And people would be happy on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good idea. We we need to have a sense of uh, what, what 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 is this event going to be, um, yeah. who is going to be involved, who can be involved. Um, I think I think there's a, there's quite a lot to discuss it because it's 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 a lot of organisation to put it all together. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, <coughs> can I uh, one one thing I like to ask is just looking at resources. How much time, Fiona? Could you find out a sort of a calendar of when we have got space available in the marketplace, and also which rooms would be available in the town hall, for instance, and the and the barn? You know, what's the availability going to be through that week? Because there will be bookings already, and as you say, the uh, the obviously parts of it are reserved for the businesses that are already front onto it. So it would be quite good to find that out. I think Nikki used to run that. Does she still? Is she still the person to go to? Yes, I, I can. I can find that out. But just to say, it's a little bit chicken and egg because they're going to say, "Well, what do you want to do?" Because um, then they'll be able to advise me whether that room or that location is appropriate. Well, um, perhaps we can so. start off just with the, the 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 three spaces that are available on the market square. Uh, that there is a there is a, a zone between, as you say, in front of the bank, uh, and I think in front of Wood, but it stretches for about three shops um, in the centre of the marketplace. So if we could find out, so that when we have our discussion, we know what the kind of scope of what we are talking about. Um, Just thinking, our next yeah. informal group meeting is the fifteenth of July. I think that's too late yes, to have this I discussion. Um, is it possible to have a discussion perhaps next Monday uh, for the informal group? Yeah. Let's, let's, Fiona, I'll, I'll pick this up with you afterwards. Let's try and do that, okay? Um, but otherwise, we won't get to the situation of knowing what we need to do and how we, how we can actually deliver it. It'll be a, a bit of a shambles, to be honest, if we don't do that. Yeah, Monday's okay. fine. Okay, uh, let's, I'll, I'll pick that up with Fiona subsequently, but the, in, in essence, the intention is to participate in this event in some manner. Okay, so let's go to the climate and ecological, it's actually not the ecological emergency bill, it's now called the Clim climate and ecology bill. Um, and Stefan is, has a motion that he's put forward and the purpose is to consider a recommendation that the council declares the ecological emergency and supports the climate and ecological emergency bill. Um, Stefan, you, I presume you're there. And in fact, yes. I can just see your forehead. Would you like to take about two or three minutes just to describing it? I will ask each member of the group to give any comments that are appropriate. I will leave my comments until the end. So Stefan. Yes, thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tony, um, um, for this. Just bear with me just for a moment. And, right, well, you have, um, you have on your agenda the script uh, on page 36, stroke 37 of the um, climate and Ecological Emergency Bill, C-E-E-B. Um, and this is being piloted at the moment through stages of committees at the House of Commons and will at some point come to a vote. Um, the, the bottom line is that, sorry, one moment. <clears throat>
Sorry, we've got uh, noisy building work going on at the moment. Um, the bottom line is on page 37 is I would like you as the Climate Committee to actually pass this motion that you declare an ecological emergency, number one. You express support for the climate and ecology emergency bill. Um, you inform the media of that decision you know, um, you know, through the normal channels. Um, four, you write an open letter to John Howell actually saying that Henley Town Council supports this bill. And also um, write a letter to the um, CEE Bill Alliance who are organizing and piloting and shepherding this bill, this bill through. So just briefly, I'm not an expert on the CEE bill. I am sort of a, a, an interested amateur. I've been asked by Greena Henley and Kate Aldridge to pilot this through uh, or shepherd it through um, through this committee. And then the notes of this will obviously go to the planning committee for further ratification and then onwards to um, onwards to um, uh, full council. First to say that SODC and OCC have also passed similar motions supporting this bill. Um, the bill forms three parts. Part one is to state that we really should, for the sake of our planet, um, establish that 1.6 degrees of warming is the maximum that should be allowed. Part two, which is not included in the climate, in, in the climate emergency bill and also the resolutions that we passed that established this committee going forward. Um, although instrumentally it implies ecology and habitats, it isn't actually expressly in the bill. You know, global warming will have an impact on ecology, will have an impact on habitat, but it's rather like an aside. So part two of this particular bill actually establishes that habitats are going to be impacted and the ecology of the planet and our local ecology is actually going to be, um, is going to be impacted if the warming carries on as is. A subset of that is it's to try and persuade the importers from other places in the world um, that all imports should be sustainable and should not have an impact on the ecology of that, that particular place where it's coming from. I mean, rainforests are a classic example, although we, we pretty well have got that cracked in the EU and the UK. To actually, to actually stop it. And the third part of the bill is, is to establish a citizens, citizens' assembly. Um, this would be set up on, along the normal lines of citizens' assembly. It does not dictate to Parliament what should be done. It is advisory to Parliament. Um, it's actually um, local people actually having an influence on policy making going forward. Um, as I said, it's only advisory. If the um, if Parliament doesn't like what the Citizens Assembly uh, brings out, then uh, they can also reject it. But I actually think this kind of informed decision making process would be good for politicians. Because if we've got a body of people, including the public, actually saying, well, we should go in this particular direction, then it's harder for politicians to get out of it. It's harder for politicians to duck the difficult decisions that they're going to have to make. So that is, in summary, why I'm asking Henley Town Council to actually support this bill. Um, to a certain extent, it is virtue signalling because it's actually sort of saying, you know, we absolutely support this. Um, we should also bring it into, uh, as I, I was listening to your, your debate earlier about, you know, climate emergency decisions on Henley Town Council, that certainly 
um, habitat and ecology decisions should be thought about when decisions are being made at Henley Town Council. And I know that they are. I know that our park staff definitely take into account habitats, ecology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and Kelly will um, will be more informed than I on that. Uh, no, Mome is a, is, a, is a classic example of actually supporting in a, in a, in a, in a calendar um, the thing. So I would ask you to um, support this bill. I can't propose it and I can't second it because I'm not a member of the committee. But I would ask you to actually pass it so that we can actually move it on to uh, the debate on to planning. OK, so, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Stephen. So comments. First of all, Donna. Oh, I was going to propose it. I think we should support it. I think and then it will make the government sit up and listen. Because I think they're far too slow, too lax. Any other comments? Um, it may make awareness for other people to be more ecologically minded um, and not have such a throwaway society. Because I think far people stick their head in the sands and don't realise what's going on. Any other comments from anyone else? Likely is it, do you think? So I haven't followed this as closely as I should have done, but the climate and ecological emergency bill will be passed into law. Does anyone have any view on that? It's a private member's bill. The private member's bill. Has it got through the ballot? And this is the second time it's going forward. Okay. So it, it's about getting government support then, given the size of their majority, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions? If they don't agree with one aspect of it, say this uh, um, assembly, citizens' assembly, does that then mean that the whole bill collapses? Yes. Could they adopt most of it and maybe not that? If, I can imagine that they find that quite a pain in the back. If, if the government decided to adopt the bill, it could then modify it if it wished. All right. And, and the approach would be if the private member's bill has got some support, but there may be areas that are um, unacceptable, then the government could decide to adopt it and modify it accordingly. Any other comments? Uh, sorry, Patrick and Jackie. So Jackie first. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'd like clarity on the emergency part of it because I'm hearing it called emergency, but I also heard it said that it's not called it's not. the emergency bill. It's the climate and ecology bill now. It was the climate and, emer and ecology, ecological emergency bill. It's changed in the second. Yeah. Uh, so the climate emergency is already declared by a lot of places, including Henley Town Council. So on what basis would Henley Town Council be declaring it an emergency, an e ecological emergency? Let's come back to that in a moment. Okay. Um, Patrick. So the, the councillors declare, we were asking for the council to declare support for this specific bill. We're not asking for the council to declare an emergency in its own That's right. That's not we're true. Not that is not correct. That's not correct. It's not, it's not how not correct, it's listed on, on the agenda. No, it's not okay. correct at all. All right, so we are asking them to. Could I say, uh, what I'd like to bring out is the, the historical perspective that the Climate Change Act was actually adopted by the then government of the day, even though it started off as a private member's yep. bill and was actually brought mm -hmm. into the, and passed into legislation. It was passed into legislation with the Citizens' Assembly and that Citizens' Assembly has taken place. The Citizens' Assembly was generally reckoned to be a very good thing because it gave ministers and politicians a chance to sound out ideas with the, uh, the Citizens' assembly, assembly acting as a jury. And by doing that, they could test what would and wouldn't work with the general public. So it has a, a huge value, I think, in that respect. The, um, the, what I'd like to do, the, the, the history then, is that since then various legislation has been brought 
has been enacted and we are meant to be on a pathway to net zero by 2050. The Climate Change the Committee under Lord Devon has now come out publicly saying that we're missing that. It's not working. Furthermore, what's happened, and I think this is what's distressing me, is that whereas the original Climate Change Act did actually have natural objectives, nature objectives, and it also expected uh, biological sequestration of carbon, for instance, those haven't been stressed. And in fact, actually under the 10 point plan that this current government is working to, it's the technology aspects, which are all future, that are being worked on. They have a high carbon input so we've actually got a wall uh, to climb over first of carbon emissions before we get any savings. The savings are back end, back loaded. And they're front loading the carbon emissions like with HS2 and with the carbon capture and storage. So what the idea is that this bill is really being brought in to, ride, to try to redress that, to take a look at the natural aspects of uh, of the crisis that we're facing and to re re rebalance and also to focus government on actually meeting objectives that it's under its current pathway it isn't going to meet so I think this is really important it won't be as a private member's bill it won't get through uh, but what we want is that the current government was to take some of the policy that is being put forward in this and they would adopt it and they would put it through in their own bill. Uh, I can't see any other way that it would get through. Any other comments? Jackie? Yes, I wanted to build on Rebecca's comment about the likelihood of it being enshrined in law. And I'm curious to understand better that if that were to happen and targets were unable to be met, what would the penalties be or the consequences to councils by not meeting their targets? Hmm. Okay, Stefan? Um, well, on that, um, I mean, a number, a number of people have alluded to the fact that it might not get through anyway, because it is a uh, private member's bill and um, we're hoping that it will, And but, the, the subtext of it is we hope it influences um, government policy, even if it doesn't get through. And um, I mean, the government will, let, uh, in answer directly to Jackie's point, the government won't allow any legislation to go through that, um, that has penalties attached to it. I mean, it will only ever be advisory at the end of, at the, end of the day. And as you know, you know, the way that China and the UK and America wiggle out of their obligations um, uh, to actually have an impact on the temperatures of the planet is, is case in point. So therefore, what we are just doing here is actually sort of saying, this is a good bill, and I think it is a good bill. It states 1.5 degrees, as, and it puts front and centre the ecology of the planet and habitats. And that's the critical thing, that we can have an influence in Henley Town as well. Um, and also, I think the Citizens' Assembly is a good idea because it will be another voice for the people to have an influence on policy makers. So it may not get through, but I think we should pass it because it certainly has... Uh, the potential to influence government policy. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Jack again? Uh, I'm afraid that's not what we're at being asked to vote on. No, you're right. Um, any other comments before I offer some thoughts? Okay, I shall. If that, if, I have got quite a few thoughts. I mean, first of all, the motion actually conflates two motions. The first is to declare ecological emergency, which is largely the focus of the first three paragraphs of the motion. 
Um, I'm minded to accept this, but frankly, I don't know how Hen Town Council should uh, respond and who with the, within the council would be responsible for its actions. Um, the second motion is to support the climate and ecological bill. Um, I support the objectives in that bill relating to the climate emergency. I don't know how many of you actually read the latest version of the bill. Um, one of its clauses, as was mentioned, is to establish a climate and nature assembly made up of a representative sample of the UK population, which must seek expert advice and then recommend measures to be included in the strategy. Um, some of you may be unaware that there already represent, exists an independent body, the UK Climate Committee on Climate Change. Um, I actually don't know why another body is needed. The committee published its latest report on Thursday, which is a double report on progress in reducing emissions and progress in adapting to climate change. It it's a report in total of about 230 pages with 32 pages of recommendations set out and targeted at individual ministries. Um, within this report is a comment that says the Prime Minister's 10 point plan, which has already been referred to, was an important statement of ambition, but is yet to be backed by firm policies. Clearly, although the UK's Committee on Climate Change is offering independent advice, the challenge actually lies with the politicians not moving quickly enough. Um, if you look at the bill, it inserts, or the, the, the issue about politicians is tackled by inserting the word must 16 times. Um, it, it is compulsory upon the, the um, Secretary of State to act upon the recommendations of this independent committee, whatever it might be. Um, you could say that this group is an independent assembly, although whether it's made up of experts probably may be open to question. Um, however, if when we provide advice to the Henry Town Council Planning Committee, they then decide whether or not to implement. If the approach advocated by the, the Climate Emergency and Ecological Bill were to be adopted for this group, then I'd be interested to hear the response from the Chair of Planning for Henry Town Council, or even the Chair of the Planning for Oxford County Council, and in terms of being told that they must implement our advice without uh, any consideration. The point that Stefan made about it's not compulsory, it is compulsory on the Secretary of State. It then goes to Parliament to decide whether they implement it or not. Um, my, my view, perhaps outdated, is that advisors advise and ministers make decisions. Um, I don't agree with the presumption in the bill that the Secretary of State must dot, 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 dot. Um, within the motion and also within the bill, there are also aspects that actually stretch capabilities. One is item D, which all emissions that take place overseas, including manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, scope three is the uh, emissions factor of which I'm quite familiar because of my work, it relates to supply chain. It's notoriously difficult to achieve. And including that one within the um, motion is a bit um, challenging. Um, Henry Town Council is in the process of developing its own carbon footprint, but it hasn't got a great ability to identify that of its UK suppliers and definitely not those, if they exist, of its overseas suppliers. For the UK as a whole to, to try and attack, approach this approach of, of tackling all overseas issues would be extremely challenging. And therefore, on the basis of the, these comments as a whole, I am unable to support the motion as it stands. So I think unless anyone else has any comments, um, which I'm happy to take, let's go to Patrick. I'd just say that um, the, the, the consequences of not addressing those points, the consequences of not addressing our, uh, uh, our uh, scope free emissions are, could be devastating because we can't rely on all countries in the world in taking the responsibility that this country is trying to take in terms of carbon footprint. And one way we can 
actually enforce it worldwide is through sanction. And the sanction that we've got is whether we choose to have them as a source of supply or not. And I think that, you know, we are facing uh, 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 it's a critical point, I think, in, in, in the fight to for the survival, really, of not only natural species, but also of humanity as we know it at the moment. And just because things are hard to do, I don't think that's a reason for not trying to do them. Rebecca. Um, I mean, I think a bit what, what Patrick's saying, really, I, I don't think we should let the perfect get in the way of the good. Um, I take your point about it, about, um, it being very difficult to measure emissions across the whole of the supply chain. But it's also true that in the UK, we have to be outsourced an awful lot of our emissions. Um, so whereas we may feel very pleased with ourselves from a global point of view, of course, we're, we're just emitting them elsewhere. Um, I, I accept that it's very difficult to measure. But on the other hand, for things like, for example, um, child labor in clothing factories, that type of thing, that might be something that's a lot simpler. But it didn't, the fact that we can't do it perfectly didn't stop us saying, um, imposing sanctions on goods that we're importing being produced by child labor. So um, I, I, I think that you, know, you, you, can, you can say this is our aim, we may not get there, but even getting part of the way is better than not getting any distance at all along the journey. Uh, Jackie? But we're not being asked to vote for those two things. We're being asked to put forward a recommendation that Henley Town Council effectively declares an ecological emergency, yeah. and we're asking that the council supports a CE bill. Correct. Any other comment, please? You'll allow me one more and then it'll be my final one. Jackie, you're absolutely right. Um, we are asking the Handy Town Council, that's why there are four things on this motion. We are asking the Handy Town Council to add its voice to the fact that there is an ecological emergency and its voice to support the bill. So you're absolutely right. It's clear in your papers that that is exactly what we are asking Henry Town Council to do. Thank you. Okay. Shall we move then to a vote? Okay. All those in favour of recommending this to the Tony, some, committee? Someone from the committee has to propose it because Stefan can't propose it. Donna did. Councillor Crook Donna did. Has, has proposed the motion. Yes, there, sure hasn't, has. there hasn't been a seconder yet. I'll, I'll second it. Right, could we then have a vote, please? Those in favour? Kelly? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in favour. I'm in favour. Those not Where's... in favour? Those of seeing? Right, so the recommendations goes to the planning committee and that the this working group recommends it. All right. So let's then go on to the next item, which is thank the you, date. Thank you, Patrick uh, Stephen. The date of the next meeting. Fiona, do you have some suggestions? I wanted to suggest um, Tuesday the seventh of September at half past one again, if that, that time. Mm -hmm. Is, is good for people. Mm -hmm. Thinking that people will be away and things quite a bit um, in July and August. Okay. People happy with that? Yeah. Thanks for okay, me. Let's, let's go for that then. All right. Thank you, all of you, for your contribution and the discussion. Appreciate that. Um, let's move forward on the actions we agreed. And Fiona will submit the minutes in due course. So thank you very much indeed. Um, Fiona, can you stay on? Or can we just sit, set a meeting for that discussion on uh, Big Green, uh, Great Big Green Week? Okay, thanks everybody.